Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Can we give one more round of applause for all the filmmakers and great actors and for our PX? So we're going to answer some questions now. And I'm going to introduce the people on this panel. I'm Jack Davis, the CEO and co-founder of Crypt TV. This is, does anyone know who this is? Oh, it's Dead Meat? Oh, yeah, shit, the wrong person here. <laughs> um, this is James Dead Meat Janice. <laughs> Coming to the stage, perfectly fashionably late, Annie Northman, who's actually a Crips fan, and that's why we wanted to have her here. Maybe our biggest fan, our first fan, we're very lucky to have her. And Kate Krantz, Chief Content Officer of Crip TV. Oh, yeah. And maybe it looks like one more person's going to join the panel. Oh, oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, buddy. It's pretty unsettling. I guess that's the point, though. <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Yeah, get, get your picks in. You'll get here. Since, uh, since we have such a great audience here, and I appreciate everyone waking up early, I want to make this as much Q&A as possible so you guys can ask James any questions or Annie or Kate or myself. But real quickly, I'll start with you, James. You are such a talent. So much of your work is done in analysis, and you do, obviously, the kill counts and the podcasting. How did it feel to shift gears and go back to, I know, some of your roots mm -hmm. in acting? Yeah, it was, uh, it was weird because for the you know past year, I've just had total control over all my creative projects with uh, everything on Dead Meat and the Kill Count and everything else. So... Uh, especially that it's it's hosting's very different than acting. Hosting is just being myself and goofing around about movies, and uh, to show up on set and for them to be like, "No, you're like a heartless psychopath." I'll try. Yeah. All right. So. How did the 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 blood fountain bath feel? Oh my God, dude. It was uh. So that was the last day of shooting on uh Look See season two. It was an overnight shoot. And it was in Griffith Park in Los Angeles, like a, a large wildernessy park. And that was around five in the morning that we did that, because it was obviously the last thing we had to do, because I would be covered in blood. And so, you know, we're fighting uh, to get it in before like dawn. And it was just there was viscera in that fake blood. There was like fake. I think it was like pantyhose filled with weird <laughs> chunks of things, and one hit me in the in the mouth, and oh, it tasted yeah. weird. And then I had to drive home covered in blood. It was it was a weird experience. It's but. it's just so awesome that James <laughs> thinks the blood is fake. So cool, so cool. <laughs> so Annie, yes. What do you think? Well, as the Crypt fan up here, as our maybe our biggest fan, how do you? What's your immediate reaction to Luxie season two? It was really awesome. I really liked it. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, so w when did you discover Crypt? Are you a big okay. Rooster Teeth fan? And, and, and in general, how much of your entertainment do you watch on YouTube and companies like Crypt versus TV or film? Well, at first I um, discovered Crypt on Facebook, actually. It was like a video. I think it was a vampire video. Mm -hmm. I was just like watching that one, and I was just watching it thinking like, oh, my God, this is really cool. And so after that, I was just like clicking through the videos and scrolling and scrolling, and then after that, I was just hooked. Can you also show off this awesome vest you've made? I'm sure everyone here appreciates it. <laughs> this is the coolest vest. thing I've ever, you can yeah. describe it, Kate. Yeah. <laughs> all by me, it's by me. You got me, it's all by me. I love it. You know, obviously you have someone like James up here who's so talented and crypt in that community spirit and the YouTube spirit. We love people who make things themselves, so very cool. So, Kate, what do you think the biggest parts of Look See Season 2 are, is there anything maybe you want to not explain, but talk about that went into making this season and where you see it going from here? Yeah, so I mean, I hope you guys liked it. We make it for you guys. Um, but our process, I don't know if you guys recognize how much control you guys have over what we make at Crypt. So we released the first season. You guys like this guy, which we like him too. <laughs> And we saw that you guys wanted a lot more understanding of like how long has he been around, his backstory. So that's why we went back in time to show you that this guy's been around for a while. It of course informs our understanding of who we should be working with to see what the fans respond. So I want to ask you, James, how 
do you incorporate your incredible, very engaged communities feedback into your work? And how do you think they will feel about seeing you in a new role? And as, as it comes to being a creator and having a vision, how do you also also incorporate other people's feedback? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, there's, there's kind of like a give and take because uh, a lot of people want me to do a lot of things. And if I did them all, I would just uh, implode from uh, everything that they want. And so it's, it's definitely like just trying to balance what I want to do, what I think would be best for the channel and my own creative endeavors, and then what people want to. Because, uh, for instance, like with the kill count, a lot of people ha are like, do, do Infinity War uh, kill count. I'm like, it's not really my thing. Sorry, sorry if you're out there and you just want me to do Infinity War. It's just uh, that, that I feel like that's not being true to myself because uh, I want to incorporate what people want to see and what people want me to do while it never feeling like I'm like selling out. And that's, and that's why it's so fun to work with Crypt TV is because uh, Alex, uh, one of your team members, hit me up in an email and uh, I actually missed the email until months later and then I checked it out and I was like, oh, this is, because I've gotten emails from like mobile games and people who want me to, to plug their stuff and I'm like, that, it just doesn't feel right. It's not mm -hmm. something I actually believe in, but when I checked out Crypt's stuff, uh, specifically Looksee uh, especially, I was like, oh, this is stuff, something I can really get behind. And like, when I talk about it, I, I can be sincere about it because I actually really do like it. So. Yeah, uh, that's so interesting to say that. Annie, how important is it to you as a fan that the channels you follow stay organic in what they do? And what would you say Crypt does well? And actually, I don't even want to hear, you know, what, when we stray away, you feel like the community doesn't like. Well, honestly, it kind of depends on the person because some people may like the really scary stuff and other people may like the really silly stuff. Like me, I like it all. I'm not mm -hmm. that picky. Like, it can be silly, it can be funny. It can be the really best good. type of fan. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Exactly. I wish everyone I'm was you. Picky. I love everything about it. Interesting. And Kate, when it comes to the filmmakers you work with, is anyone here an aspiring filmmaker or wants to act or direct or write? Okay, a few hands. Put those hands up. <laughs> what, what, what would you say are processes, and what would you say, having worked in film before, what opportunities does this platform give, mm -hmm. and how can people best take advantage of that? I mean, I'm a little biased, but I think that we are pretty good about abiding by best idea wins, and if you have talent, and if you have passion about what you're doing, we will always love to work with you. Like That's exciting to us more than anything. It's not about the resume, it's about the vision. Um, and we like cultivating fresh talent, and we saw Landon off of a couple YouTube videos, some of which were like his acapella videos, if you want to deep dive into some of those, it's a good time. <laughs> um, but he, he has a real point of view and perspective, so we were able to work with him in a way that was digital friendly. He understands that the fan comes first, and that's something that we always hammer. It's all about the fan. Um, and we can always create something new and fresh and original if we abide by that. What's the, James, what's the most difficult part of being a, obviously self-supported, you're making your own stuff, your audience is what's getting you your Google check. What's <laughs> the most difficult part of that, though? What are the things that you think people don't see that goes into this, you know, amazing work you do, but I'm sure it feels like a labor of love sometimes? Yeah, I, it's, it's, it's the amount of work that goes into it and uh, I try to show that. I try to, I try to show behind the curtain. Uh, that's why I do editing live streams on my channel to show people uh, the work that goes into a video because it seems like sometimes people think that uh, the video takes as long as it takes to watch it to make it. And they're like, why are you spending all this time on a 15 minute video? And it can be up to like 40 hours uh, for one of those videos. And I'll do an editing live stream and it'll be an eight hour stretch of editing and people will be like amazed by it. I'm like, that's not even the whole thing, man. I'm just, that was just today's work. And uh, so I, I really like, that's kind of one of my missions on YouTube is to show people the work that goes into being a YouTuber. I think that a lot of people think that it's just this really easy job to fall into. And I'll, it, it's, it's the dream job. I'll never complain about having it because I love what I do and I love that I get to do it. I'm very fortunate but uh, I, I don't want people to think that it's a simple thing. I want people to know the reality behind it, that it's, mm -hmm. it's constant work, and especially, uh, yeah, relying on other people. It's very, it's very unstable yeah. and, and can, can be scary sometimes. And 
when it comes to relying on other people, what do you think, do, 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 you, feel, and do you feel like the, the movies that you're actually covering, those studios, support you? You wish they gave more support? Because I always look at it as you're giving them amazing free promotion. Yeah, uh, I would love it if they felt the same way. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I hear that a lot from fans that they like didn't know about movies that I've covered or they uh, had written them off previously, but after seeing my videos on them, went out and bought them and support them. I always try to retweet those tweets because mm. just to show that that's happening. Uh, yeah, it'd, it'd be cool to get a little bit more support from the studios. Yeah. And I, I think I'm starting to, uh, now with the growth that I've experienced, I think I'm starting to uh, open those channels of communication. Yeah. Well, we'd love to help with that. Oh, thank and, you. Annie, what percentage, I'm just curious, what percentage would you say is, are you watching TV and your favorite TV shows and favorite movies versus your favorite YouTube channels, your favorite YouTube content? Let's see, I would have to say, it's kind of like 50-50. Interesting. I do spend a lot of time online watching good TV videos and other videos as well, and occasionally I'll be watching like a scary movie on TV or something. And when you're watching YouTube, are you just, going intentionally to see what's new on your favorite channels or just spending hours once you're there? Or how would you say you watch? Uh, it would vary. Sometimes I would like just browse to a certain channel, just check out different videos, see what I like. And other times I would just go to like, my favorite channel, just like type in something like a best scary horror short and just like follow through. And just go and go and go. Yeah. Um, well, I want to make sure we have lots and lots of time for Q&A and that every single, maybe even person, can ask a question. So who wants to go first? Right there. I think you can go to the mic there if you want, or you can maybe just. It's a long journey. Yeah. It's it's being long very long long. Long. This is your personal journey. <laughs> <laughs> We're not all staring at you. Don't worry, man. <laughs> no don't pressure. mess up now. Let's hope I don't. Okay, yeah, that's not too loud. <laughs> Last time I nearly burst an eardrum trying to talk. Uh, so have you considered partnering with Netflix, with uh, the look-see and all that? Just like James wants his movie studios to see that, we would love Netflix to hear that question. <laughs> but no, to, to, to answer that question seriously, we would work with a bigger partner, someone like Netflix, if we felt like that was the best way to tell more of the look-see story. We're very excited to release these four episodes to the public. I think people are going to love them. One thing I love about YouTube is you can go and rewatch and rewatch and rewatch. So there's a lot of hidden things in there that maybe some people picked up on and want to ask, or maybe you missed. So once we release these four episodes, we'll see how the reaction is. But obviously, we love this show. We love this character. All crypt monsters exist in the same universe. So we're excited to reveal how this character interacts with our other monsters, but we would do that, but only if it's right for that IP, only if after these next four episodes or future season or season three, we decide this is the next best step. In the front. Kate. Um. That's a good question. So all of the characters in the Crypt Multiverse are connected, like Jack said. And what we try to do is come up with a motivation for each character that fits into something that's universal for a lot of people, right? So this dude's all about emotional baggage. And the lesson being, like, you carry that with you, it starts to change you into something you don't even recognize. It's not good for you. You just got to let it go. This is a really extreme example of that. Um, but that's how that came about. So we, we ideated just the concept of it, and then we sat down with Landon, and the design came together, and then the story actually came from that. Annie, as a fan, how much are you interested in the deeper emotional story versus just enjoying the videos, or what's the balance, and how much are you actually reading through other people's comments for theories when you're watching a crypt, crypt character? Well, as a fan, me, I really do love, like, the deep psychological stuff, and, like, the emotional stuff, because, like, more realistic to me and that's what like that's what makes horror like really make me want to enjoy it a whole lot more mm -hmm. and um what was the other question no, that, that was perfect that was okay. it who wants to go next for, for a question any monsters have weaknesses they do um that's such a good question so 
Uh, you'll notice in a lot of crypt shorts, without telling you all of the secrets, a lot of our characters are connected to what we call the totem. So the watch in this is a totem, and it kind of navigates with the monster in our world. So for some characters, you can use the totem like in the birch just to summon the character, and then she acts on her own free will, even though she has her own moral compass. But others, like the look -see, you'll come to see with future episodes, that they actually, he needs a human proxy in order to navigate in our world. And it's very closely tied to the person that has possession of the watch. Mm. Mm. Back there. <laughs> uh, first off, I wanted to say I'm a huge fan specifically of the look -see. It's out of everything that I've watched on Crypt TV, I, it's got to be my big favorite. Out well, of just everything. tell him thank you. He's right up here. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> uh, one thing. Um, was it? I forgot the question. Uh, I got 19 minutes, don't worry. Oh. <laughs> um, how exactly does all this play on each other, really? Like all the monsters with each other and all that kind of stuff. And specifically, uh, whenever you're writing an episode for the Luxie, what inspires the character or the rather the, the human mm -hmm. who is being uh, you know, attacked or hunted by the Luxie? Um, that's a really good question. So yeah, don't give away too much. We have a, we got to keep some of this under lock and key, but there's about like a hundred page document that we have a crit that's a hundred percent private. That is kind of our guiding light and the Genesis story of our entire multiverse. So that's what we refer to when we're coming up with new characters. Um, when it comes to the human characters that we're tying to the monster, I think it's really important that we don't have people in our stories that are just for fodder. I think it's really important that we reinforce that human beings have agency and that there's always good at your core and you have an opportunity to change and I think that that shapes our worldview. So we want to be positive with how we present that. Now obviously there's a rainbow of personality types in this universe and some people are bad people um, and so we want to show those. We also want to show people who are good inside but have trouble making the right decision sometimes. Um, so it, it's a lot. We want everyone to feel like they have a mirror when they're watching our content. Maybe not in one particular piece, but across all of our 800 individual pieces of IP that we've created so far, there's something for you that we hope helps you navigate your life in this world, um, contextualized in the Crypt Multiverse. James, maybe you want to share for everyone what it was like to work with, because everyone you know, knows you as a great talent, but obviously probably the podcast or Dead Meat, what it was like to work off a director and how an actor, that relationship is so important, and then what it's like as an actor playing off the other actors in your scene and how important that dynamic is. Yeah, uh, so working with Landon was great, the writer-director. I, like I said, I went to film school and he just reminded me of people who I went to film school with uh, in, in the best kind of way, just uh, having that vision and energy and drive to get it done. So he was great because he was just, I think one of the most important things that a director can do that maybe you don't think of as a director's job is to just keep everyone on set motivated and happy. And he always had a smile, he was always willing to uh, himself do the extra work that needed to get done. I mean, for some of the shots, he was like crawling around in the loft of the barn and getting all dirty, just like trying to get the shot right. So uh, you, when you see that, when you see the director of the project doing that, it just inspires you to do everything you can. And then as far as like reacting with the other actors, a lot of my scenes were with Mr. look -see there and uh, it, it's not hard to act against that because, you know, four in the morning in the woods in Griffith Park and he's like stepping out from under a, or from behind a tree. I don't really have to act that much. I'm like, oh geez, all right. And uh, so that's a lot of fun. Also getting blood dumped on me is, there's no act in there. Don't that's trust just... us, don't trust <laughs> us. Uh, who wants to ask the next question? Right there. Hand went up first. Feel free, there's a mic right there if you want to. Hi, um, okay, so I really like the look see, but I have noticed that it's extremely similar to Spider-Man in a sense psychologically, physically, and, and it's obvious that it's um, stemmed uh, from Slenderman in a sense that it's inspired from Slenderman. And if that, would you say that the look see would ever have been created if Slenderman hadn't skyrocketed in popularity? 
speaking f uh, on behalf of Crypt, I can't speak on behalf of Landon, who's our filmmaker, who's obviously not here today, 100%. You know, I think there's always going to be similarities between monsters and the emotional anchoring of them and how people feel, but we obviously feel like our characters are very distinct. I think, of course, it's a completely fair question. That's why it's up to us as we grow not just the look -see, but grow all of our monsters and characters to keep giving them distinct storylines, distinct characters within those new episodes. So I think that that's something you will see from the look -see as more and more episodes come. Like I said, we want to release this season first and see how people react before we decide what comes next. But I think for look -see, as well as every character in, in the Crypt multiverse, they have specific reasons for being, specific storylines that we think make them unique from anything else. You. Back right. Uh, hello. Um, okay. um, I wanted to ask, I've noticed that throughout the show, let's see, like, you have your actors being silent and all, no, just using their acting muscles for everything. So I want to ask, what made you decide to do that? Um, a few things. I think first of all, we've noticed that our, our viewers, they're really smart and we don't have to spell every single thing out for them. Um, I think we can give them the framework of the story and it's almost like when you, when you don't have every piece, your imagination runs wild and that's when it can eke into your own nightmares um, after you've seen it. The other part is we have a huge uh, international fan base and not everyone is an English speaker and sitting and reading it in subtitles is an option, but ultimately it's gonna detract from the intended experience. So we want everyone, no matter where you are in the world, to be able to come into the Luxy universe and have a similar shared experience. Annie, as a, as a fan, do you enjoy the no dialogue in these now eight Luxy episodes? Oh yeah, I'm all for it, I love it. James, I actually think it's harder to act when you don't have lines of dialogue because Definitely. then it becomes, so how, how was that for you on set? Yeah, uh, my job is to talk a lot. I, <laughs> you know, my, my scripts for my videos are like 4,000 to 5,000 words that I spit out really fast. And so it was difficult for me to not say anything on set and to uh, just try to emote with my face, especially since the character that I was playing the description was emotionless. So it was like, okay, uh, this is a challenge, but it was a lot of fun. And as a, as a person who has done filmmaking and was on set for this experience, I've also got to say, it's, it's not a, I don't think it was a cause or a reason to have no dialogue, but a nice little byproduct of that is it's way easier to shoot when you're, you don't have to worry about recording sound because uh, recording sound is a separate thing in the filmmaking process that you have to like merge uh, after the fact, but even just as simple as, oh, uh, while you're shooting the video, it's like you can say things like, all right, look, see, lean down, lean down, okay, stop, okay, good. And you can say that while the camera's rolling and it doesn't matter because there's no sound, so that was nice. Yeah, well, you, you did a great job with it. Oh, thank you. Right there. Crypt has an 18-person team in the office, mm -hmm. but obviously our team extends way beyond just 18 people. We get to work with talented people like James. You know, just because our directors or our production crew or all the people who are doing lighting and gaffing aren't on set, I mean, aren't uh, on, like, full-time Crypt employees, we still consider them part of our team. So we have 18 people full-time, we have so many other people helping and chipping in and get to work with great people like Poised, who's sitting here in the second row, and James, we consider them part of our team. And of course, the only reason we have a company is because of all the people who watch and the fans and the community. So that's probably the most important part of the whole team. So you mentioned that there's this totem uh, and like things like the birch can be summoned. Does that mean there's like a monster realm and do we get to see it at some point? You guys are very smart people. <laughs> um, you are going to see pieces of our multiverse. I can't give away too much right now, but um, we've had our writer who kind of works on this with us always, sitting down with like a theoretical physicist to actually <laughs> break this. It's pretty intense. 
but you know, I think that the what I can tell you is that there's m multiple layers to the evolution of these monsters. Luxie is obviously it's not a human. This is a, a full-blown monster, but there's actually a tier both above and in between Luxie and human. Um, and you're going to see a lot of those characters start to populate in Sunny Family Cult, which we have premiering this fall too. You're going to see for the first time human beings interacting with monsters from multiple other shows and have like real tangible crossovers start to happen. So we're going to answer a lot of those questions with new shows and you're probably going to have 50 more questions after you see them and we'll do our best to keep up with it. And you just must spend your entire day in the comment section <laughs> debating those questions. Next question, speaking of questions. Back, way back right. Uh, let, uh, well, let you go, you go, you'll go next, way back, right? Right, this guy, this guy just got the mic, got to respect <laughs> it. Yeah, um, kind of a two-part question. The, uh, how do you keep it light on the set for the little girl? I mean, do you like tell her, does Luxie tell her jokes just to keep the, the mood light? <laughs> And then also, are there any like kid-sized monsters coming? Um, that's a great question for the little girl. She, you know, we we work with kids a lot, um, and we make sure that they're in the makeup room and they see the monster getting ready and they talk to the actor before and they know like. And then we bring a, in a new monster to really yeah, fuck with them. Nice dude. <laughs> um, we have had incidents where you know even when we're shooting, the stuff gets really scary, which is our intent and both adults and children need like a moment every once in a while depending on the intensity level so we try and be really respectful of that um kid size monsters yes we have a few that already exist in the universe and we have more that are coming um kids are kids are scary so we're <laughs> definitely <laughs> we're definitely gonna have more annie as a as as a media lover, what's it like? Do you watch YouTube videos? I'm, sh I'm guessing you watch YouTube videos primarily alone because yeah. that's where most people watch YouTube videos. And how is that different watching alone something scary versus maybe going to a theater where you're with a bunch of other people? Well, me, I, re I prefer actually watching a lot of scary things alone because it kind of brings you more to like the scary setting because I love a whole dark room, just mm -hmm. TV or whatever, just a dark room, scary movie, silence, just the whole ambiance. It just makes it even more better. Create your own ambiance. I was just wanting to know what what inspires these monsters, like as far as their relationship, or like for Luxie, uh, what inspired the emotional baggage connection, or protector of women, or whatever. Um, this is a very simple answer, uh, but it's truly talking to you guys. You guys. Um, commenting and sending us messages and telling us about your life and what you're going through and why this genre is important to you and how it helps you navigate through certain situations. A hundred percent, that's what guides us. Um, we don't pick things that we feel are trendy. We want things that we feel like can apply and make these characters lasting and iconic and have them serve a purpose that you can grow up with. Um, and it'll still be engaging and interesting. So you guys who are talking to us and sending us messages, we watch every single fan video that you make. We read every single comment across the company. It's not just like the data team, you know, going through them and, and trying to use it. It's the development team and everyone on content who's making sure that we're taking into account what matters to you. And just to add to that, I would say it's scary and monsters, I think, give a permission structure to talk about deeper issues. You know, sometimes comedy can do that, sometimes superhero movies can do that, and Monsters and Scary can do that. So we just want to talk about relevant, emotionally anchoring stories, and Monsters is just the way we do that. Uh, we have five more minutes, so if you have a question, I want to make, have you, have you asked a question yet? No? Nope. Well then, you're up. Um, you kind of covered it uh, with that last bit. Um, my question was going to be, how, I found you guys through analysis channels like Nightmind and Soundflix and so on. How much of those, how much of that content do you guys like go out to go look for and see what do people think? Or like, hey, can't believe they missed this thing. Can't wait for someone to figure it out. Little things like that. How much of that? It, it's, it's a complete partnership. You know, I think it's kind of what James said. And this guy is so <laughs> honest with who he wants to work with that maybe I'll let you, you take a little bit of it. But from the Crip side, I know we don't want to just go work with 
the biggest numbers YouTuber or maybe someone who doesn't fit our brand, if we're going to be honest about telling emotionally anchored stories, we want to collaborate and work with people who are both A, excited about our mission, B, are doing it because they are interested in helping us and sharing with us the ability to tell these stories. And I forgot what C was, so I'm going to pass that to you, James. Uh, maybe C was stuff that uh, partners who like your audience is really Partners to. who like, that's exactly correct. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I did the collaboration, the first collaboration video with Crip, not to toot my own horn, but I think you guys got like 17,000 subscribers in a day. And th it was cool to uh, feel like I had sent people over, that many people over, but it wouldn't have happened if it weren't for, for your products because... Uh, I could just, you know, I could make a video collaborating with anyone on the internet and uh, people aren't going to necessarily follow through on that unless they really like the thing that I'm showing them. So I think that was the biggest indication that this partnership was a great yeah. idea. Was that, that that's, so a, that, that's a great point. And that point is, of course, that we only want to work with people and I think they only want to work with us. If, as they say, one plus one equals three, that combining our forces make everyone bigger than you could have ever expected. And that's going to only come if there's true affinity for the content on both channels. Synergy. Synergy. Yeah. Business. <laughs> I think I, I, he hasn't asked a question yet, so I want to give him a chance. So we develop with an in-house roadmap that plugs into the universe that's existing. So we kind of have the guardrails already set, but we wait to color that in until we talk to the audience and we see what they're really excited about. Um, but we, we try and tailor it so each one will get more and more specific and narrow. Like after this new season releases, we have a pretty clear idea of the direction we want to go story-wise but we'll wait to color out the exact characters until we see who our audience is really excited about. Who has not, raise your hand if you have not asked a question yet. <laughs> then this gentleman right here. And then I got you next, buddy. Hi. Um, so I just wanted to ask, how did you guys come up with the look for the look seat? Because I feel like, it's, especially in this age, it's hard to come up with something original. So how did you come up with like the look, how he acts, how he walks, all that? Um, so, you know, I wish Landon was here to answer some more specifics for you on that, but I think on our side, what was important to us is that it represent visually his action. So when he's physically taking a piece of you and he's consuming a piece of you, um, that's why he's different pieces of flesh. These are different individuals that he is made up of. He uses some of their parts. Um, and then in terms of the hands, we care a lot about, for some reason, in a lot of our content, hands are so important to us in, in the visual and how we see them creeping around. So we wanted them to feel elongated. But it was also critical for us that this isn't like a creature. This is from behind, if he's standing somewhere, his silhouette, he looks almost human, which is really disturbing to us too. Um, I think that those were kind of the starting off points for the conversation. And then once we sketched out that first episode story-wise, the pieces just kind of came together. Not everyone. Um, it varied from the first season to the second because the second season we did some finessing for the actual mask. But it's usually a few hours to get him totally, bless you, uh, up and running, good to go. And then there's touch-ups that happen throughout the day. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming out. Thank you. Let's give one last big hand. Up here, we have, up here between these three folks, we have everyone that really represents Crypt, which is the amazing talent we get to collaborate with, an amazing person in his community, James. Everyone clap for him. <laughs> Obviously, our... We have an amazing content team, directors, actors, writers, and Kate leads them all. So huge, huge applause for Kate. And then I save the best for last because, Annie, we appreciate your longtime Crypt loyalty and support. You're welcome. And fans are number one for us. It's the only reason we get to do this every day. If we get to continue to do this, that'll be the only reason why. So our community and our fans come first. So thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.
Watch new scary vids every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday.